have one of those. Okay, here we go. Snap in. More than a year after Clark Sistala's death, it is both comforting and sad to hear her partner's voice. It's too soon for me to say. I'm just now coming out into public. The world still moves, but those who worked very closely with him understand the gravity of what we lost uh, last July. Quax was born in 1929. At the time, his family saw danger in residential schools. And they put a plan together to seclude this young man, to conceal him, to not have him on the record. Hidden and raised in the forest, his sole role to learn and teach the oral history of his people. It's a millennia, millennia of knowledge that he knew more than just how to go and dig a clam, more than just how to go and harvest berries. His real gift has been to um, not just remind us how to dig a clam, but why, that this was ancestral. Those stories, instructions on how to live. They were to encourage children, because, you know, and I guess you'd say they were the labor force, but it was more to teach them this worldview this way of thinking, this way of harvesting, this way of respecting. <laughs> the words talk about, we're going to build a clam garden for our mother Ya'a. We're going to roll the rocks and extend the beach line and make a clam garden so our mother Ya'a will be happy. But with Quaxistala's passing, the race is now on to preserve his knowledge, their history, all of it embedded in song. All of the songs were instructions, not only about what to do, but they were also inspiration, so you felt good about working so hard. In life, Quaxistala was revered because his mother had had a dream that he would grow to be a great chief, a prophecy that proved true. His grandfather said, I don't know how, but your, your words are going to fly around the world. Were it not for him, those words, that history, may have been lost. Knowledge as people now work to pass on to their future generations. David Gauman, CBC News, Vancouver.